Good morning, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity. I want to thank my co-authors, without whom this project would not have been possible. Our disclosures can be found on the AAOS website. So a bit of background. You may all remember that there are five pulleys in the finger that facilitate flexion. And when the A1 pulley is thickened, it prevents smooth tendon gliding. That means you get a trigger finger. And when we look at this in a little bit more detail, the traditionally um, te traditional technique to, was to incise the A1 pulley. But more recently, there's been uh, some discussion about an excision of the pulley. An incision typically is a longitudinal incision through the center of the A1 pulley and divides it to release the, the um, pressure. And then an excision is excising the whole pulley in this fashion, taking it off the bony insertion. An incision uh, typically in the literature in, uh, leads to around 3% of recurrent trigger, triggering. And this risk is higher in patients with diabetes mellitus as well as hypothyroidism. This leads to increased um, usage of corticosteroid injections, occupational therapy visits, and ultimately about 1% of patients that have a trigger release end up having a reoperation for recurrent triggering. The idea behind an excision of the, of the pulley is to reduce the recurrence by reducing scar formation. So we decided that we would look at um, whether excision leads to a change in pain, leads to a change in recurrence, and a change in patient reported outcome measures. And we hypothesized that pain would be lower, recurrence rate would be lower, and there would be no change in patient reported outcome measures. We conducted a prospective randomized clinical trial, single blinded to the patient only, two arm trial, simple randomization. We included patients that were diagnosed clinically and failed non-operative treatment, consecutive patients from January to November of 2023, the five upper extremity trained surgeons at a single site, and adults were included, and we excluded patients that had previous revision, a previous uh, trigger finger release. Our primary outcome was vast pain, uh, patient reported outcome measures, uh, secondary outcomes were the S, uh, sorry, the finger subjective value, promise, quick dash, and the recurrence of triggering rate. And these, all these outcomes were um, collected at two weeks, six weeks, three months, six months, and one year. We powered the study off the VAST pain score, and this uh, at 80% power meant that we had to get 30 patients per group. We conducted a st standard statistical tests and we conducted a Bonferroni correction for multiple statistical tests. Uh, this is our, our chart, our patient flow chart. Um, we, we included uh, 124 patients and enrolled about 80. Um, we randomized incision, we randomized 41 patients to incision, 39 to excision. One patient withdrew in each group, led to about 40, 40 patients in the incision group and 38 in the excision group. Our demographics were overall pretty similar between both groups. Notably, there was a, more smokers in the incision group, but otherwise very similar. Uh, between the number of fingers, there was more central fingers included, thumb triggering was also included, and laterality was similar between the groups. Um, our results showed that preoperatively, the groups are very similar, pain scores were, were similar, and there's no difference there. But postoperatively, we found that there was a reduction, or well, there was more pain with pressure in the excision group, which was not what we were expecting. Overall, the vast pain was non-significant at the various different time points between the groups. In terms of our complications, we found in one patient in the incision group had severe pain and stiffness that required a corticosteroid injection. We found one patient had a skin glue reaction that required no intervention. In the excision group, however, we did find one patient had a flexor tenosynovitis and one patient had a wound dehiscence, both of which required uh, irrigation and debridement. And we did find one patient in each group that uh, had a recurrence. Limitations of this trial uh, was that it was powered for the primary endpoint only, not uh, recurrence, um, and a long-term follow-up is still pending. 
In terms of our conclusions, we do note that both groups have very, very similar outcomes at six months. Incision is associated with a reduction in pain with pressure. Excising the pulley may actually increase the complication rate, and excision may not be the solution that we're looking for to avoid recurrence. Once again, I want to thank my co-authors and thank you for the opportunity to present. All right, next is Asia Clayton. Um